how's it going on? Mike the Caveman Q here again from Paleo Problem Long Island, MikeTheCaveman.com. Today's question is, what can we do about small intestinal fungal overgrowth? I'm the Caveman! And the answer is, focus on the gut. Crazy concept, we always talk about that, right? Well, what we're talking about today is a fungal overgrowth in the small intestine. Now, we've talked about it briefly, but more so about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's generally the more common presentation, whereby there's an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine as opposed to in the colon where it's supposed to be. That generally responds pretty well to some herbal antimicrobials and a quality probiotic. But sometimes people still present with symptoms similar to that SIBO, whether it be diarrhea, constipation, bloating, gas, cramping, you know, the fun stuff particularly after eating fruits, starchy carbohydrates, and sugars. Now, the problem is there really isn't a great test out there for fungal overgrowth right now. Whereas there's the hydrogen or glucose breath test for SIBO, there really isn't one that links up for fungal growth. There isn't really a blood test, there isn't really a stool test. So, it's kind of rule out the other options and that's what we're left with. The only way you can really do it now is to go to a knowledgeable practitioner who can actually go and culture some of the duodenal juice from your small intestine. But Fortunately, there are ways coming down the line. Either way, for now, operating under the assumption that you do have a small intestinal fungal overgrowth, what can we do about it? Well, obviously, if you're having negative effects after eating carbohydrates, you're probably going to want to reduce them to an extent. So definitely minimize your starchy carbohydrates, your fruits, and definitely your fine sugars. From there, while most herbal antimicrobials do have some antifungal properties, you're going to want to look at a little more targeted therapy on that end. So, things like caprylic acid as found in coconut oil, things like grapefruit seed extract, which we've talked about before, oil of oregano, and berberine containing herbs. So, things like barberry, golden seal, yellow root, and California poppy, amongst others. Now, this does not mean you just go and bombard yourself with all of those at high doses all at once. The problem with that is you're going to have a really negative die-off reaction. However, if you implement those under the guidance of a knowledgeable practitioner, you should be able to see some good results. So your biggest takeaways on what can we do about small intestinal fungal overgrowth? Well, focus on your gut as usual. What you're going to want to do is reduce the carbohydrate intake so as to not feed those fungi. And because it is a fungus now instead of a bacteria, you're going to want to be a little more directed in terms of antifungals as opposed to generalized antimicrobials. Just be mindful not to go all in at once, otherwise you're going to end up with a serious Herkemeyer effect and a really bad die-off reaction. Hopefully this helped you out, but if you want some more information on that grapefruit seed extract, take a look at this video over here. Either way, you know what to do. Like and subscribe down below, share it with your friends, head over to Instagram and Twitter and follow me at Mike the Caveman over on Facebook at Paleo Problem Island and of course over at MikeTheCaveman.com. That being said, have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care of your gut. And I'll see you tomorrow. The answer is focus on your circulation. Now, we're playing. I'm the Caveman.